Greetings, chess players. My name is Chris Torres, uh, affectionately, affectionately known as Coach Tortoise on chess.com. And uh, this is Daily Chess Musings. I am here tonight for our final broadcast on a Thursday night with the wonderful, wonderful people at Gomes Elementary School in Fremont, California. Um, and it's been a it's been a wonderful school year. Uh, we've done a lot. You know, if you haven't seen me broadcasting on a particular Thursday night, it's because I was teaching them a longer lesson, um, and uh, so on and so forth. So they're going to be sending me challenges, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, play it by ear, accept whatever whatever challenges they're sending me, and uh, have a lot of lot of fun. Um, playing some chess and talking, talking to uh, everyone while doing that. All right, let's go to, hopefully I'm, I'm doing the broadcast right, I think I am. And let me go to play and see if anybody has challenged me yet to, oh boy, I got lots, lots of challenges. All right, so I got one with a uh, cross or bishop, 10 minutes. Let's go ahead and accept. Here we go. All right, so we got uh, e4, e5, knight f3. I'm going to go ahead and play knight f6. Petrov's defense, d6. Um... Yeah, I'm, go I'm going to go ahead and play the uh, d6, the classical variation of Petrov's. That's a very old line. Very old line. I think I remember this from a Greco game. Let me make sure my Twitch... Yeah, my Twitch seems to be working. Okay. Um, and this can lead to an exchange of queens. Lily! Can you get me some coffee, sweetie? Iced coffee? And then, um, all right, so knight c3. I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, castle. Looks good to me. I could also play c6 here and then d5. You kind of want something on c6 to stop that knight from, from intruding. Um... I could play knight d7, rook e8. Looks good. I don't know what the... Uh, I'm out of book. I'm out of book. And my mind's a little little fried this evening anyhow. Um, if you live in Northern California, I'm going to be in Berkeley on Saturday at the uh, Cal Chess Girls Grade Level State Championship. So I do go ahead and play d5 just to get a pawn in the center. I'm going to restructure things. A little bit here. Um, okay. Now I want to play knight d7. However, I don't want to block my bishop in. So I'm going to play bishop goes to e6 first. I'm going to try and get knight d7 and pawn c6 and then activate my rooks. And I am hot and thirsty, so hopefully a, a beverage comes my way. Knight d7. Had a little bit of a air conditioning mishap in my neck of the woods. Yes, I am back. I am back. I've been busy, Arcane, with some interesting projects that you're going to be hearing a lot about. Been very busy. Uh, one of those is the next, the summer um, 2022 issue of the Cal Chess Journal. But I have a project I've been working on in secret. And it's about to become public. I'm very excited about this. All right, so there's the c6. Knight could take my bishop. I could take back with my pawn. Lily, please get me some coffee. You can give it to Leo if you like. He'll carry it to me. All right, and then... I probably want to move my other rook too. I probably do. Sure. Uh, okay. 
pawn take, uh, knight takes, pawn takes is what I was thinking. And then I'm thinking of playing pawn e5 and having more control of the center. And now I don't get to play pawn e5. This was a nice move by my opponent, d4. d4, there was a, a nice move. And uh, okay, so that this creates this creates some problems for me. The control that White has on the e5 square, I should not have allowed. I messed up. Um, so Crosser Bishop has a, a a reasonably good position here. This, thank you. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you, Lily. Ah, well, that's wonderful. Now, now I'm ready to kick it into high gear. Okay. Yeah, this is quite uncomfortable. The question is, what do I do about that? Um, well, I'm going to go ahead, play h6, and hope that bishop takes, knight takes, and I can start to fix, fix my problems. I don't think they will. Oh, that actually helps me. Good. See, had their bishop retreated back this way and then this way, then they're even more controlling that square, right? It's a real problem for me. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have tried to do what I did. Um, certainly, I want to still get e5 played at some point, uh, but the rook is threatening e6, so I'm going to play bishop d6. Uh, which opening did I use? Uh, I used Petrov's defense this time. And my opponent played an early queen e2 line, which I believe I looked at them. Uh, it was a really old game earlier in the year. We looked at a game uh, from 400 years ago played by Greco. And V-Dog just challenged me as well. Super. Uh, okay, so I think perhaps there is a missed tactic here. I think I can play knight g4 and be threatening f2 and h2. It's a fork. F2 twice with my knight and rook, H2 twice with my knight and bishop. But before I do it, I'm double checking everything. Also, uh, it's not so important right now, but this knight is uh, helping me to push E5 in a moment. But the big, the big thing here is this, obviously, and this, obviously. So it's a, it's you know. I don't like having this backward pawn on e6. It bugs me. It does. But it's certainly nice to uh, hear from you again, um, Arcane Doctrine and Uncle Kev Dog, all our fans. Okay, so threatening my rook, but I'm threatening the king. So I take, say, check. And I think this is actually checkmate. Yep. Uh, so that was, you know, a, a good uh, kickoff um, to the night I may play uh, a bunch of other games, I'm sure. And I'm just having a little bit of fun tonight with the uh, kids from Gomes Elementary School in Fremont, California. Challenge the coach. Let's see who else is challenging me right now. Go ahead, send me a challenge, ladies and gentlemen. There's V-Doug is challenging me. Okay, V-Doug, you are in. Congratulations. <sighs> uh, yeah, that pawn structure could be similar to a Karakan, actually. It kind of transition that way. Bishop's opening. And I'm doing the little fork trick thing here. Here's the fork trick. If there's a knight on c3, uh, if I go back in time, uh, when you have this, this, and this, but there's no pawn on d3, then your knight can just take, right? And then you get this nice fork. It's a useful thing, because at the end of the day, black's going to have a pawn center, white will not. And I will take his bishop, because it is more dangerous to me, threatening the uh, the belly button. Then 
trade queens here. And now what I want to do is get this knight out, get this bishop out, and then castle. Let's see, castle queenside. So knight c6. Then I'm going to play a bishop g4 check, the castle queenside check. And you can see how, um, you know, I get a little bit of an edge from the, uh, the fork trick, and then I, I roll with it. Okay, so here's the bishop to g4. Pinning this, but really I'm creating the pathway to castle queenside save check. Uh. Yep, this Saturday I will be in Berkeley, California for the uh, girls, uh, girls uh, grade level state championship. Taking some pictures, analyzing games, all that fun stuff. Um, I can throw in another check because this is still pinned. And now I need to make a decision what to do over here. I believe I take what the bishop looks good to me. Looks good. Now, question is, should I take this pawn or this pawn? One attacks the rook, threatens the rook right off the bat. The other does not. Or, you know, I think I'm going to take one of those. Let's see. Well, this is a double isolated pawn already, so this one's a little more valuable. It's a doubled pawn, but not an isolated pawn. I'm going to go this way, attack the rook. Then I'll probably play check and trade rooks, meaning that my opponent's king will be in the corner for an end game. It all makes sense. You, you try and make sense with your moves. I am so impressed with, uh, I mean, I think we had uh, at the one state championships, we had 10 players this year from Gomes. And uh, many of them won, won awards. We really improved a lot next year. These kids are going to be crazy good. Now, if I go here, if I play bishop d6, my opponent can just scoot the pawn forward and attack. Uh, but I, I certainly want to get access to my rook. So what I do is I play bishop e7, and my bishop is controlling all the forward movements of this knight. Taking squares away from my opponent while creating possibilities for myself. Okay. Keep bringing in more material. Now this knight should not move because you lose the bishop. I have three pieces in the game. My opponent really only has two. Was that a good move? Was it? We'll find out. I don't think it was, because I can pop my knight here if bishop takes, pawn takes. So I can I can go, yeah, mm-hmm. Uh. So if bishop takes, pawn takes, and then I can support my pass pawn with pawn c5. So I've got a pass pawn with a rook behind it already, and I'm going to play pawn c5 to support this pawn. Here it comes, pawn c5. So I've got a protected pass pawn. That's trouble. That's trouble. Now that I have a protected pass pawn, I think it's time to pester this powerful knight. Remember, my bishop's taking away the forward squares of the knight. So it means the knight's got limited possibilities. Moving backwards. Okay. And should I attack it again? Seems legit to me. Let's improve my bishop while attacking the knight. 
Okay. And now this pawn, if you're paying attention, is under attack. So let's go ahead and defend it. And then I'm going to start scooting this pawn forward. Hmm. Yep. Saturday at Berkeley for the Cal Chess uh, Girls Grade Level State Championship 2022. And then um, uh, within uh, a few days, you're going to hear um, a major announcement involving uh, something to do with my channel. And uh, I'm pretty excited about it. It's been something I've been meaning to do for a while. And yes, I will return to streaming on a regular basis. Other things you should be uh, you should be thinking about too is uh, my free online summer chess camp. Check it out on dailychessmusings.com. It's open to all ages. Free online summer chess camp. I've got a wicked good cast of supporting chess coaches who are just awesome. I think we've got uh, three FIDE masters, a strong expert, a top author, and a grandmaster who are all going to be joining me for these free camps. Um, plus, I will be, of course, teaching a lot. I'll be running the show. Three of those. Uh, we have uh, club chess matches right now. Um, just got uh, involved in another one. There's still some openings. So if you want to uh, represent the Daily Chess Musings Club against another club on chess.com, you can do that. Um... Is it time? Is it just time to push this pawn? Yeah. Past pawns must be pushed. And I've got double protection on this square. Uh, yeah, rook to the 7th is usually what you want to do, but bishops do go backwards. attack this pawn it's stuck it's an immobile target when you're when you're threatening targets go after the ones that can't move targets that can't move stationary targets easy to attack it makes sense but you know if if you don't say it some people might not realize it it might not click in their brain that the reason that pawn was such a tasty target is because it was blocked by a knight. It couldn't move. Yep, club matches. Um, free online summer chess camp. It's the big deal. It's the big deal. Go check out dailychessmusings.com. No, I'm not accepting a draw. Sorry, V Doug. Not doing that. Um, uh, sometimes it feels easy. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes chess is a nightmare. So, you know, the, the minute you think the game's getting easy for you and this and that, um, you'll go through a, a period where, where uh, um, everything seems more difficult than it should. And the, these are just the ebb and flow of growth. Uh, all right, so this is stuck on a dark square now. I think I'm going to get this knight to move, because check out my bishop taking the squares from this knight again. It's placed right next to the knight. So I think what I'm going to do is, you know, I'm happy like this. I'm happy like this. So I'm going to attack this knight. And then uh, things should be a lot easier. The knight has uh, nowhere to go. So if you're if you're white right now, you probably want to play. You know, you, you got to play a4. Stop that right away. Nope, does not. So there it comes. And that creates the uh, pawns no longer blockaded, can just scoot forward, check. Ooh, it auto-queened. That's dangerous. You can sometimes uh, 
Stalemate, if you have that set. I must have uh, set that when I was playing some uh, uh, 30 second chess or something and forgot to turn it off, because usually I do not have it set to auto queen. So take, take, and then I'll swing my queen back. Up. Oh, he didn't take. Good for him. All right, I was, I was looking for a, a cool little checkmate there. Uh, what's my best best method to checkmate? That's the question. Do I have a mate in two? Looks like I might. Check. And then the king has to go. Oh no, nope, the king can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the king's got to go here or here, and either way, I go here, and that's end of game. Mate in two. Okay. Who is a next? One of these times I'll show you guys how to put the uh, fangs in the Frankenstein Dracula variation. I should do a lesson on that. Maybe around the Halloween time. Uh, white did not in this game. But trust me, it can be quite a sharp, sharp, sharp thing. Let's see. Anybody challenging me? Chess.com is being slow. There's Dice Knights wants to play a 30-minute game. Okay, Dice Knights, let's play. Go ahead, my friend. Make your move. Oh, game aborted. Darn. All right. Let us... Go to play. Anybody else want in? Uh, these are students of mine at Gomez Elementary School in Fremont, California. So they're students and viewers. Um, I do a lot of teaching. I uh, volunteered my time with the wonderful, uh, wonderful kids at uh, Gomez Elementary School this year, um, and had uh, just a, a wonderful time. It was a school I taught at uh, some twenty-something years ago. And uh, came back to help them uh, get back into get back into it after the uh, pandemic. Um, let's have some fun. I'm going to play my A3 move. Okay, Anderson's opening. And then uh, what I like to do here is the uh, pawn C4, then Knight C3. I'm pretty good at Anderson's opening, actually. It's named after Adolf Anderson, who defeated Paul Morphy uh, with the uh, with the opening. In their first game of their match, Paul Morphy was having blood let out of him because he had a severe, severe flu. He was near death um, in the hotel, uh, having blood let out of him. That's how they would treat severe flu back in the day. And uh, Adolf Anderson uh, destroyed him with 1A3. And then uh, Morphy won the rest of the games. Or I think, you know, maybe they had one other draw. Maybe he won the rest. Um, and uh, those games are up on dailychessmusings.com. But uh, I, I think Adolf Anderson, being the nice guy he was, thought, in, he, he, at least it's my theory, all right? Um, he played uncharacteristically poorly in the games afterwards, and I don't think he wanted to just destroy Paul Morphy when he was on death's bed. Literally on death's bed. Now, Paul Morphy didn't die, ended up uh, defeating Anderson, so everybody viewed him as the strongest player in the world, went back to the United States, retired from chess, um, and so then Adolf Anderson returned to being viewed as the strongest chess player in the world. But that's why it's called Anderson's Opening. So I have this uh, this um, wedge shape here. And what I'm doing is controlling d5 on my opponent's side of the board. What this bishop's going to do, if his queen moves up like this, then it's not going to pin over there. So I'm going to actually finchetto my other bishop. Uh, whoops. I scooting this pawn forward. A3 is a first move. It's a very flexible move. It's a very flexible. And uh, see, A3 allowed B4 here. It allowed me to play B4. I couldn't have done it otherwise. Um, I, I've uh, played A3 at the highest level of international correspondence chess. Uh, one of my games is relatively uh, famous. Um, and uh, I know a lot.
lot, a lot about the opening. Um, I have to make my choice here of where my queen should go, though. Queen c2, queen e2, unify the rooks. I like queen c2 a little bit better because this knight is stuck on c6. So I'm putting my queen. Uh, well, you know, I need to, I, I would need to broadcast more often Arcane Doctrine, and I plan on doing that. Um, and uh, uh, my name is Coach Tortoise, so it's not, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, the, the hair off to a fast start, right? Someday in the, uh, in the future, um, I'm sure my channel will be more popular. It's a slow and steady approach. I'm going to, here's a, a definite choice for me right now, but I'm going to put my only piece I haven't moved in place. This is this rook. It's the only piece I hadn't touched. I touched every other piece on the chessboard. Remember, the back row is pieces. I touched them all, and I moved that rook into the same file as my opponent's queen. There were certainly some other choices I could have done there. I feel like I'm very well set up for some chaos now to ensue. So, let there be chaos. Here we go. I'm very well set up positioned for this chaos. I've got a rook in the same file as my opponent's queen. I've got bishops on long diagonals. I've got my queen in the same file as a uh, potential target knight. Mm -hmm. Gets rid of that. This could create a problem for them, I, you know? Let's see. Generally, you want to take toward the center, and here it gives my queen more scope. See, my queen sees more squares now. Okay. And now, do I play e5 right away? I could. I, I'm sorry, d4, why I call it e5? Who knows? What's going on, Chris? What's going on? e5, he said. Makes no sense. So, now I've got a more traditional, beautiful pawn center, I might add. Even though I started with a3. Okay, and check it out. This bishop is starting to get more and more active. My knight has a beautiful target right here on c6. F4 could be played, followed by E5. I'm playing some strategic chess here. I have taken a bigger, I, I, I control more space now, right? Strategic chess. All right, E4 is a weakness, but it is very supported right now. So I think I can play F4. I think I can. No, I don't accept a draw. It's too exciting to accept a draw. Why would I accept a draw here? Okay. Here we come. No guts, no glory. F4. Yeah, we can chat, Dice Knights. Go ahead and say. Sure. Why not? Oh, the knight goes back. See, maybe he shouldn't have been chatting with me, because now my knight can come up here, right? Uh, that's a very powerful spot for my knights. On his side of the board, totally supported. Boom. Uh. Knights in the sixth rank are as good as they can get. It's as good as a knight can get. It's like a rook in the seventh rank. Now, I really want to play this, don't I? I do, but it makes this weak. I got to be careful. Make sure, make sure that I'm ready. Am I ready for this? Uh, I don't know.
don't know. But I tend not to accept draws very often because it, it limits my abilities to learn something. I'm uh, uh, getting rid of uh, learning opportunities. Every time you, you agree to a draw early, you're learning, you're playing less chess, learning less. Uh, so that would be attacked once. It's very aggressive, but I think it's definitely called for. Okay, boom. Now I got two pawns side by side on my opponent's center squares. I'm just moving right across. Wow, this is getting... Uh, one mistake and my center could evaporate. I could lose a pawn, right? And then, and then I'd be very sad. Because I would have wasted such a beautiful position. Right away, I see potential to do this. Pinning that to the queen. This knight, though, can come here and hit my queen, right? And rooks. So right away, we got to really be quite thoughtful about all of this. It's the right way to go, though, because if I take this queen, then I'm forking a... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's do it. All right, so defends. That was wise. That was a good, good move, I believe. Good job. Looking at my potential checks, captures, and threats. I have the advantage. It's very obvious to see that I have the advantage right now. But my big pawn center is also being a big target, right? And it is now a pawn island. I have three pawn islands. You'd rather, you know, you'd rather not have three. Three groups of two pawns, all right? If I lose one of these center pawns, then it's just an isolated pawn. Then I lose that one, and then my advantage is gone. Checks, captures, threats. Checks, captures, threats. I mean, I could put a queen like on uh, b3 potentially, which lines up with the king, <sighs> which lines up with the rook. Um, I could, I could, you know, like do a rook f4 move. Rook f4 looks pretty, pretty reasonable. Rook f4 threatens the knight a second time and gives me the potential to, uh, yeah. Queen b3 seems really good to me too, though. I like rook f4, though, because it's putting more pressure on this pin. And potentially, I could form a battery um, on the uh, f7 with two rooks. Who do you think is going to win, Dice Knight asks me. Well, I think I might. Perhaps... Well, me, of course. <laughs> of course I think I'm going to. I mean, if, if, you know, and hopefully he thinks he's going to win too, because otherwise, otherwise, why are we even doing this, right? All right, so bishop takes. Uh... And then I believe I take it back with my knight here, which adds a third attacker. On the pin knight. Yeah, this rook f4 move was kind of a nice one. I kind of like it. All right. And now... Hey, this, this takes away my tactics on g6. I had a double attack going on g6. That's not very nice. But I still... Yeah, 
have knight takes f7. Hmm. Which threatens the queen. The queen does not have the ability to check me because my pawn is on b4. Why is my pawn on b4? Because I started the game with a3. Okay, so knight takes f7. Got to be careful. I got a knight hanging out near my king. My opponent's rook is in an open file. Has the ability to throw in a check. I got to calculate accurately. But I, I, I've got a good position here. I mean, I can, I could, I could play bishop takes knight and then knight h6. There's a, there's a check. There was a check. But my bishop can step in the way. Let's be careful. Okay, bishop's in the way. But that means this bishop is pinned. It's pinned. It won't be for very long, because otherwise I'll just take his queen. But it is pinned for the moment. Oh, I love styles that involve sacrificing pieces. Generally, I do that a lot. I just happened, happened to uh, play, decide to play a strategic game. My rating would probably be much higher in strategic if I played strategically more often rather than crazy sacrifices. Oh, that was a good move. That was a good move. I didn't anticipate this. So I was hoping to get force the queen off the sixth rank. So my queen could take g6 and just end it, just like that. So I think what I want to do here is play, get my queen to safety, play queen b1, and then his queen cannot go there, can't go there, can't go there, can't go there, has to leave the sixth rank, and then I get to take g6 and just end it. All right, here we go. Let's see. Would knight takes g6 instead of x7 been a reasonable sacrifice? Uh, let me go back. Uh, no, I don't think so, because his queen's hanging out on the sixth rank. His queen was hanging out on the sixth rank, so if it wasn't, then yeah. But see, his, his queen's a good defensive player. Um, but I think his queen has to go. As it turns out, this rook f4 move was really nice because I was able to throw in that bishop. Yeah, yeah, I was able to throw in the bishop um, to uh, block the queen and attack the queen, which is key in this. Yeah. Oh, it's easy to get carried away sacrificing pieces, Arcane Doctrine. In fact, uh, sometimes I do it just for fun. Sometimes I do it just for fun. All right. All right. Well, I still cannot play Queen Takes G6. But I can play bishop takes queen. But then my opponent gets a check right away. But then my rook comes back and blocks. Okay. All right. So bishop takes queen. All right. So now there's no guard on g6 anymore. <clears throat> there's that. And then this comes back. This way, if the knight moves out of the way, um, yeah, not having a problem. <clears throat> and my queen is still threatening g6. Unfortunately, this rook could take on uh, b6 now, and then my queen can still not take it. All right, good, good. Finally, I get to play queen takes g6. Finally. 
That really took some time. And my opponent resigned there. That was an interesting game. That was an interesting game. Uh, in fact, uh, let me uh, let me do a quick game review of that. See what it looks like. All right. So let me make sure the game review. Let me show off some of these cool Chess.com tools. Uh, yeah, there it is. Okay, just making sure. And then uh, it's analyzing game. I felt pretty good about this game. Uh, 90 accuracy, it says. Okay. And my opponent played 76.2, which is a startlingly good job, Dice Knights. Let's start review. Uh huh. So we play uh, Anderson's opening. And this rook AD1, uh, the computer did not like. This move doesn't hurt much, but it doesn't help either. Well, I'll tell you why I did it. It was the only piece I hadn't moved. And I took it and improved it. I put it in the same file as my opponent's queen. But, just out of curiosity, let's see what the computer says was best. Popping the knight into the outpost right away. Okay. Fair enough, but you know... Um, yeah, if, if you study a lot of Paul Morphy, you'll notice that he touches all of his pieces. And then, it really, it didn't like knight c6. I mean, it's beautiful getting it to that outpost. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. I agree. Let's show the line. Go ahead. Yep, and then, boy, I'm... Re and then the knight goes to c6. Bam, and then I take with check. That would have been pretty. That would have been pretty. Um, so, yeah, that was definitely, you know, missing. But that's okay. Uh, and then, let's... Uh, It likes that move. And then I have this powerful center on my opponent's side of the board. Look at look at how my my uh, center materialized. Rook f4, it liked. Good. That was the move that I was unsure of. Knight takes f7. It liked queen, block. And again, this block would not be possible if it wasn't for the rook being on f. Actually, it would be. Never mind. I had a rook on d1, so never mind me. Um, and now I just want to play queen takes g6 to win the game. But it's not being allowed. And then now, here is questionable. Uh, it says I have a mate in four. I, I, I was figuring it's a forced move. Was that right? It says this is, leads to a checkmate, but there is a faster route. Okay. Um, let's show uh, what was best. Okay. And show line. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was some neat geometry there. That was some neat geometry. All right, so, yeah. Moving the queen over with check. Um, but, let's see. My opponent resigned here, and... Uh, um, which is also a uh, mate and four, which I saw. Much simpler geometry, though. Uh, I admit that the uh, the other one uh, did look prettier. Um, but, yeah, you know, um, A3 is a fantastic opening. Not going to recommend it for young players. Always start with the center pawn, right? But 
the idea, the way I like to play the A3 opening, it's kind of my method on it, is I, I try and fee and shadow this bishop, and it doesn't have as much scope because I do put a pawn on E4 a lot of times, but what I'm doing is super controlling D5, super controlling the D5 square. And then if my opponent um, does something on the queen side, then a lot of times my bishop will come out here and pin the knight. If my opponent does not, then I will fianchetto the other bishop, and I just have this extra space on the queen side. Um, and then, uh, you know, with the bishops as supporting rules, I can I can push these pawns forward. And you see, I have two center pawns right here on my side on the key squares. I have three center pawns actually, out of four. But I mean, I got the pawn on e4 and d4, and then. Um, in no time at all, I'm able to get a pawn on d5 and e5. And that's uh, what you don't want to let happen if you're black. You don't, you don't want your opponent to just control this much extra space. Because then my pieces are better than my opponent's. They have more squares. I can maneuver more. All right. Um, all in all, uh, this was a really, really uh, fun, fun game. Let me see if I have any more challenges that I've missed. I don't think so, but let me go ahead and check. Uh, nope, I have played everybody from Gomes who wanted to play me tonight. Uh, Gomes Elementary School, thank you so much for the wonderful experiences here. I had so much fun with you guys. And uh, remember, free online summer chess camps. Got uh, Fide Master, James Ede. You've got uh, Top Chess Author, Lauren Goodkind. Attacking Maestro, um, Francisco Anchando. We've got uh, Fide Master, soon to be IM, Eric Lee. Uh, he's already gotten another IM norm just recently. He's going to be an IM very soon, I predict. Um, Fide Master, Kevin Pan. Grandmaster, Mackenzie Molnar. And Correspondence Master, Chris Torres. Free online summer chess camps. You can find out about them on dailychessmusings.com. Thank you, everybody, who uh, tuned in tonight. And uh, thank you, Gomes Elementary School, for the wonderful, wonderful um, fun time we had. All right. I will see everybody next time. And it won't be that long. It won't be that long. Why don't you raid somebody? Uh, show me how to raid somebody. How many followers do I have? I got 13 viewers. Sure, we can raid somebody. What do I type again, um, Arcane Doctrine? Oh, do a raid and username. Who should we raid? Go ahead, tell me. Raid, and then uh, uh, a space. Who should we raid? Who, who, who's watching right now? Who, who should we send our 13 viewers to? How about 95 Horatio? Okay, sounds good. I'll take your word for it. And Kablawi, the raid has been created. We did it. Super. Thank you so much for the uh, for the suggestion, Arcane Doctrine. And uh, I will see everybody next time. Bye.